guys, welcome back. My name is Megan Tennant, in case you didn't already know, and I've got a new video for you guys today. In December is well underway, so most of you guys have started posting your reviews now. If you don't know what In December is for some reason, link in the description down below. It is a December-based indie author-focused reading challenge. It's going to be great. There's a giveaway at the end, which is going to have tons of cool prizes, including the newest edition of Kindle. It's going to be great. It's a waterproof Kindle, guys. Like, check it out. And also, tons of cool books. All of these books here. It's a little bit late in the month, but you can still join. I believe in you. Also, you don't have to win. You can just play to participate and support indie authors and we will all love you for it. So yes, most of you guys have started posting your in December reviews. So a lot of you have started to encounter the issue of what to do when you read an indie book and you didn't like it. If you're anything like me, you feel a lot of guilt when it comes to leaving negative reviews, but we need to leave honest reviews. You should leave a review and be honest, but how do you deal with the guilt of doing that? That's what this video is all about. Also, if you're a writer, this video will help you feel a little bit better about getting negative reviews. So, double points there. Booktube and AuthorTube, all at once. Benefit number one, all publicity is good publicity. I think it's more accurate to say that most publicity is good publicity, but in the case of books, any well-written review can pique interest in a book and give people more information about the book, which makes them then more likely to buy it, even if the review is ultimately negative. So this doesn't really apply to one word bad reviews where they're just like, I hated it. Yes, I know that's three words, not one. Shh, it's okay, it's okay. The reader of the review is still getting more information about the book which is potentially going to pique their interest in the book, which makes them more likely to click if they see it in the future or just flat out buy it. So if you're feeling guilty about leaving a negative review, just make sure to make it detailed. Include any compliments that you can think of and also just try to include as many plot points that you can think of that aren't spoilers, obviously. Benefit number two, a negative review to you is not necessarily a negative review to me. My favorite example of this is a review on Aletheia Yes, I read the reviews of Aletheia, don't judge me. I don't suggest this for the average writer because there's a whole bunch of problems that come along with reading reviews, but I read the reviews of Aletheia. If you want me to cover why I do that in a video and kind of dig into that further, let me know in a comment down below, but otherwise we're not talking about that in this video. But there is a review on Aletheia that is a two-star review. I'm not gonna say by who, but I find it honestly hilarious because the reasons she cites for Aletheia being bad are things that I just view purely as compliments. Her number one complaint, if I recall correctly, was that Aletheia has too many gay and lesbian people. I suspect she didn't know the other words for other sexualities, but I mean, maybe she just really likes bisexuals and asexuals and demisexuals and pansexuals and all of the other sexualities that are represented in Aletheia. Her second complaint was that Aletheia is very violent and very adult. So that's why she gave it two stars. Now, if I came across this as a random reader, given my tastes in books, I would see that as an endorsement for the book and that would make me want to buy it. So that is a very common thing in reviews where something that someone thinks is worthy of a negative review, someone else, loves and that piques their interest and makes them want to buy the book. Which ties directly into the next one, which is number three. Bad reviews prevent the wrong people from reading your books. If there's a bad review where someone says that they just hated so much that there was a love triangle, someone else who has the pet peeve of love triangles comes across that review, they see that, they're like, well, I'm not gonna read that book because I hate love triangles. That prevents that second person from forcing their way through your book only to not like it. So it helps filter out the people who share the same hates as the people leaving negative reviews. Benefit number four, some people only trust bad reviews and therefore only read bad reviews. So if you don't have any bad reviews, they're just gonna click away because they have nothing to go off of. I know a lot of people, sometimes me included, honestly, who will filter out reviews for two, three, and sometimes four stars. So that kind of filters out people who just hate the author because they hate them and people who are friends and family because those people would fall on both extremes of the spectrum and not in the middle. So those middle three review types are gonna be the ones that are the most honest, generally. I tend to aim more for three stars because that's where I find that 
I get the most of both worlds where they give positives that they liked and negatives that they didn't like. And this is true of tons of people who read reviews. So if you don't have any reviews under four stars, a lot of these people are just gonna click away because they have nothing to go off of. Benefit number five, a book with too positive a rating is just flat out suspicious. If I see a book on Amazon that has a bit over 50 reviews and its star average is five stars, I'm gonna start to wonder, and I know sometimes this is unfair because it's not always true, but internally, I start to wonder if they purchased those reviews. And that's not the kind of image any author wants. So having some negative reviews helps you bring your average down to 4.5 or four, because that's high enough that people view it as good but not too high where they start to wonder if the reviews are real. So even books like Harry Potter that is beloved by millions or, or billions? Billions? How many people are on the world? I have a degree in biology and I don't know how many people are on the world. It's billion, right? Seven billion? I don't know, I don't go outside, I don't count people. How am I supposed to know how many people there are on the world? But I digress. Lots of people like Harry Potter, but if you check out Harry Potter on Amazon, you'll find that the review average is I think like, 4.5, it's not a solid five stars because it's not natural for everybody who reads a book to like it. So having a bit lower average is gonna help a lot with your credibility. Obviously you don't want it to go under four because then people start to think that maybe the book is bad, but having some negative reviews helps dilute it down a little bit, which can be really helpful. Benefit number six, any review, whether negative or positive, increases your review count. And the more reviews you have, the more credibility your book has. Because generally speaking, traditionally published books have a high review count. So when it comes to indie books, the book has a really low review count. People are going to be less likely to give it a try because they view it as something that maybe had less professional work put into it, had less marketing put into it, the person maybe has less exposure, less reach. So that decreases the credibility of the author. So whether negative or positive, those reviews are going to increase the review counts, which are gonna end up helping the author. And last but not least, we have benefit number seven. Negative reviews tend to attract more attention. Big disclaimer, huge disclaimer, I'm not saying the people who leave bad reviews on books are doing it for attention. I'm not saying that booktubers who leave bad reviews on books are doing it for views. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when given the option between a two star review and a four star review, a lot of people who read reviews will tend to go towards the two star review. We're humans, we get bored, we seek out excitement. Naturally, subconsciously often, we're gonna gravitate more towards the negative side of things. I have been guilty of this in the past. I have filtered for negative reviews to read them because they gave me a little bit more entertainment value than the positive ones. I'm just saying, Sometimes the negative reviews can be a little bit more entertaining than the positive ones. With the exception of really well-written positive ones like Kate, Paper Fury, her reviews are entertaining no matter if they're negative or positive, they're always hilarious. But amateur reviewers, their reviews tend to be a bit funnier and more entertaining when they're negative. Again, if a book doesn't have any negative reviews, then people are likely just going to skip it. Whew, that was it for this video. I'm sorry, I went back and forth between kind of talking about you guys as if you're a writer getting the negative review and you're a reader giving it. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. But yes, these are the benefits of negative reviews. Whether you're someone considering giving a negative review or you're an author who's received negative reviews, hopefully this helps both of you guys. I honestly had to write this out for myself so I could see it because I feel a lot of guilt when it comes to giving negative reviews and having this written out helped me personally. So hopefully it helps you guys too. And yeah, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and a share. I keep doing this thing where I do thumbs up and share and they're both thumbs up. I don't have a hand symbol for share. And if you aren't subscribed, subscribe down below. If you are subscribed, hit that bell so you can get notified as soon as I post a video. We post on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so make sure to check out the channel on those days for new videos. If you like dark dystopian books, Alethea is available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. And I am okay with honest reviews. So if you read this and you don't like it, you can give an honest negative review. You can give a one star review. You can give a two star review. You should probably give a five star review because, you know, you like me, but I'll forgive you for one stars and two star reviews. So thank you guys so much for watching. That has been this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.